Hi, it's Lee and welcome to the Tesla Economist. So chances are that you've heard that Tesla have announced a new mega pack factory already, and this time it's in Shanghai. I would say that most of you also like the sound of this and makes you feel bullish about the company. It's another example of how Tesla is very much an out of the blue company and we just get these random unexpected events that are a big deal for the company. The factory is going to break ground in Q3 this year and aiming to start production in Q2 2024. And as this is China, then there's a good chance it should be all on time with minimal delays. Up to about now, Tesla's energy side of the business has really contributed very little. Despite Megapacks, Powerwalls, Solar Tiles, etc. All really cool products, but very small numbers, at least relative to the auto business. Tesla has been very much a car company with potential on the side. It's not difficult to run some numbers on the potential of energy storage and see that it can be very lucrative and many think it will be bigger than autos, Elon included, except it hasn't come close and has basically been losing money or at best breaking even for several years. Except last quarter, we saw just about double the amount of storage deployed compared to what Tesla typically deploy. It also hit a positive gross margin. This was due to Tesla's Lathrop facility in California, an old Sears warehouse that was retrofitted into Tesla's first Megapack factory. Tesla were very quiet about the opening of it and have been somewhat coy about the progress. We know that supposedly it has a capacity of 40 gigawatt hours, but in the community, there are quite a few credible people stating that this will be much higher. We've been told that Tesla will now be able to consume all LFP cells they can get and use them in their vehicles and any excess cells will go into the Megapack factory as it is that much easier to ramp or slow down when compared to an electric vehicle line Tesla also have a backlog of orders until 2025. They also get a $10 kilowatt hour from the Inflation Reduction Act as a subsidy. When you factor all that in, then when ramped up, some people have speculated that Tesla's gross margin could be as high as 50% when all the costs have been calculated for Megapack. But in reality, I would guess it's probably somewhere between 30 and 40%, which is still really good, considering vehicles are floating at around 20% margin. And 40 gigawatt hours is actually a sizable amount. I mean, that's enough cells for about 660,000 Model 3 standard ranges. That's a lot of vehicles. However, this was Tesla's first attempt at a manufacturing facility for Megapacks. It was a retrofitted factory and is in California. Now, this new Shanghai one is custom built from what they've learned from Lathrop. Oh, and it's in China where things cost significantly less to build than California and likely run more efficient. Just compare Tesla's Fremont facility, a retrofitted factory in California for autos with Tesla's Giga Shanghai factory much higher output per square feet and significantly less cost to build. Not only that, the cells that go into the Megapacks in Lathrop, well, they have to be shipped from China in the first place. This new factory, well, it's already in China. The market for energy storage should be decent in China too, as they have a lot of solar. And as we expect China to be able to make them at a lower cost in California, then perhaps the margins will be even higher again. Now, not many of the credible energy people think that Tesla will stop at 40 gigawatt hours a year in China either. People are saying it's more like how Tesla initially announced the 200,000 Model Y a year from the Shanghai factory, and they're now up around four times that. And Tesla did say that they plan to initially produce up to 10,000 units a year at 40 gigawatt hours. So there will likely be several phases and we could see production much higher over time. Now, my current estimates have Lathrop eventually reaching about 200 to $250 gross profit per kilowatt hour produced there. And some credible people I've been speaking to are suggesting they'll eventually get to about $275 to $300. If the two new factories are ramped up to perhaps 100 gigawatt hours eventually, maybe in 2025, and average $250 per kilowatt hour, then we're talking $25 billion gross profit a year. That's gonna be more gross profit than Tesla will make with autos this year. However, by 2025, we would expect autos to have increased quite a bit and still likely be higher than energy, but probably not by too much, depending on how many new auto factories are on the way. How about sales though? Well, as we know, Tesla have moved over to LFP sales for the energy storage, and this has reduced costs quite a bit compared to the previous 2170 sales used. It also makes energy storage safer as LFP sales are more solid and less likely to catch fire, and they cost less too. CATL are supplying these sales, but if Tesla are going to continue to grow, then they need more sales. CATL has a new factory in Shanghai that has a capacity of around 80 to 100 gigawatt hours a year of sales. 
CATL are also partnering with Tesla to build an LFP factory in Texas, likely about 100 gigawatt hours a year too. So there should be ample sales for energy and for new vehicles. And CATL won't be slowing down from there either. However, it seems that CATL are likely done making their traditional LFP cells and have moved on to their M3P cells for the Chilin battery, which is actually 13% more energy dense than the 4680 and is also structural. So this makes me rethink things. What is the point of using a more energy dense battery that also has capabilities of being structural in a megapack? Therefore, my theory is that megapacks will end up using the existing LFP cells that are going into the current standard range Model 3 and Model Y, and those vehicles will be replaced with the new, more energy dense Chilin battery. The M3P cell is like a hybrid of ternary cell and LFP cell. Ternary cells use three elements in the cathode, like 2170, which are usually aluminium, nickel, manganese, or cobalt. However, the M3P cells actually use zinc, magnesium, and aluminium. No rare cobalt required or expensive nickel, yet still able to achieve a reasonable energy density. In my opinion, these cells will hit a real sweet spot, and they may be added into the Model 3 with the Highland update, then the Model Y with the Juniper update. They will save money due to the higher energy density fewer cells will be required for the same range. I hope this is the way things go, as CATL have really done a great job with their cell chemistry. It would be a shame for it to just be sitting there in energy storage. It would also be a step backwards producing more LFP cells when they have a better chemistry. Just like there's no point building more 2170 cell factories, as 4680 is a superior form factor for vehicles. After that, then we'd also expect Tesla to eventually set up a megapack factory in Europe too. And CATL are building lots of factories in Europe as well so they can source the cells locally there. Obviously, energy costs are high in Europe, and there is a lot of solar and wind that would benefit from energy storage. Hopefully, that might start sometime next year. The energy business is finally growing, and these factories combined with CATL's ambitions will pave the way to Tesla being taken seriously as an energy company and not just a car company. I don't know what PE ratio you would assign to Tesla Energy, but if they have these three factories, then perhaps these alone will get up to about 150 gigawatt hours a year capability, which alone would be approaching $40 billion in gross profit, which is pretty exciting. However, Tesla plan to grow energy by about seven times that by the end of the decade at one terawatt hours a year. That is a lot more growth and will take gross profit to more like a quarter a trillion dollars. Although we would expect costs to come down somewhat by then too and likely prices as well. So if we have $40 billion in gross profit from energy by some time in 2025, and we see the path to reach one terawatt hour a year too, then energy would be contributing about $35 billion in earnings. And I think a P ratio of 50 is possibly justifiable if the growth continues, which would mean that perhaps Tesla's energy business could actually be approaching a valuation of $2 trillion for the company, excluding autos. Energy also has solar, power walls, and auto bidder too. Bear in mind though, we are only at about an annual run rate of $600 million gross profit a year for energy today. So this would be a big jump, but it is certainly possible. And even if it is one quarter of what I suggested, then that still gives us about the valuation that Tesla is today, just for energy. We know Tesla's targets, and now we have some of their plans of how to get there. Thanks for listening. Please hit the thumbs up and subscribe. You can follow me on Twitter and talk to me on Patreon.